Hey guys, today's tutorial is a gothic skull wedding cake with a bit of hand painting, roses and edible lace. So this is the middle tier, it's a 6 inch round already covered in white. To learn how to cover a cake I have a tutorial for it linked above. You can choose to cover your cake in red sugar paste if you wish, but it can be a little sticky so we're going to airbrush this one. I'm using Chromacolor red airbrush paint, yes I know it's a messy bottle, they all look like that after a while. Spray it onto some paper first to check the colour. Gently spray the top of the cake to get an even coverage. Links to everything I use are in the description box below. Then work on the sides. It looks pretty patchy on camera but that's due to the wet areas. The colouring is pretty even. Now put that aside to dry. Next we are preparing the edible lace. The mat I used is called Floral Fern and I have one to give away. To enter, head over to Instagram and follow me at Cherry Cake Co. Scroll down to find the goth wedding cake and leave a comment followed by hashtag Cherry Comp. And that's it. I'll contact the winner by Instagram private message on the 18th of September 2018. Good luck. I've mixed some black cake lace as per the instructions and applied some to the mat using a scraper. You just want to push the mixture into all the little details. Don't forget to fully fill any empty areas. Now you can either let this dry overnight or speed up the process in the oven as per the instructions. The bottom tier is an 8 inch round covered in white paste and we are doweling it with 7 straws as a 6 inch will be going on top of it. I lift the next tier on a knife and gently support it with my hand. Make sure your tier is dry and firmed up a bit otherwise you'll end up with fingerprints. Then dowel the 6 inch with 5 straws ready for the white covered 4 inch cake. So this wedding cake is a white 4 inch cake, your red airbrushed 6 inch cake and a white 8 inch cake. To measure the height of your middle tier you can use string. Just hold it up and see how high you'll need your lace. Once your lace is ready and fully dried flip the mat over and gently peel it out. If you struggle removing it then it's not quite ready so leave it to dry a bit longer. Or if you feel your lace is too thin you can add a second layer of mixture over the top. Once it's out, you'll see that it's quite flexible, almost like the real thing. Snip your lace with scissors to a more manageable height. Cover the back of the lace in some piping gel. Wrap your lace around your tear, gently patting it on with your hand to adhere the piping gel. Next, take some scissors and snip the remaining lace to the right height. Patch in the rest, butting up the cut edges together and trimming to size. The skulls are traced onto some greaseproof paper. I put the design together in Photoshop, outlining a skull image from Google and adding in some floral swirls to make a unique design. I also traced a different skull for the top tier. As the design is quite complex, you can trace it on the back with pencil. If you've seen my other tutorials, you know it can be traced simply by pressing in with a Dresden tool to make an impression. This is great for script, but the impressions can get a little confusing or merged when the design is tight and busy like this one. So using the pencil can make it a bit easier to see and the line work left behind is a minimal trace and non-toxic, so don't worry. I bet you've eaten worse. To paint on the design, get yourself a fine paintbrush and some black paint. I use rainbow dust metallic black. Carefully follow your lines to bring the skull to life. Water the paint down into grey for shaded areas. Now repeat the process on your 4 inch tier. The great thing about making your own designs is that you can get it to fit however you want. Now that the painting is done you can cover your board. 
There's a full tutorial on this in the iCard. I'm using Renshaw's Black Paste. Now measure the circumference of your 6 inch tear with a tape measure. Mine comes to 51 centimetres. Now divide that by how many swags you want on it. I'm going to say 5. 10.2 centimetres is the width of each swag to get them all even around the top edge. Mark in with a scalpel or Dresden tool the start and end of 10.2 centimetres all around the top. For the swags, a quick way is to roll out some sausages with tapered edges. Just roll out a sausage and gently pull as you roll to make them thinner at each end. Layer three sausages together, bending them into a slight U shape. And you've got a quick, easy swag. Why make it more difficult? Apply the swag with water and pinch off the ends so that they meet your 10.2 centimetre marks. Then add another swag, again pinching off the extra to make sure they all meet at the mark. I've got this cameo mould by Marvellous Moulds. I'm a sucker for a skull. If I find it, I'll leave it linked below. Now you can fill just up to this point in white for the skull and then fill the rest of the mould in black paste so it comes out as a two colour piece. But I find it just as quick to paint it. So dust your mould with icing sugar and insert some white paste with Tylo added. Pull out any excess and smooth it down flat. Next, flex your mould to loosen it and then pop it out. The skull can be left white and we can just paint around the frame. Let them firm up just a bit and then add them to the joints of the swags with water. If you add them when they're too soft, you may squish out some of the detail. Then go in with your fine paintbrush and black paint. I've done enough tutorials by now to be conscious of where the camera is set up, but I still managed to get my hair in shot or my nose. For quick foliage, snip some black wire into thirds. I think this was roughly 24 gauge. Roll out a teardrop shape from black paste and attach it onto the end of the wire with either water or piping gel. Twist it down the wire to secure it. Using a foam pad, squash it flat with the palm of your hand. Mark in some lines with the Dresden tool which will create tiny spiked edges. Make a few of these varying the sizes of teardrop. Put them aside to dry. Once they are dry, you can tape them together. I'm using black glittery floral tape by PME, which I'll link below. Wrap the tape down the wire, pulling it to activate its stickiness. Add in other leaves as you move down until you've created a little spray. Make around three of these. To line the tears, I'm using a pearl mould and black paste. Pearl moulds can be a little hit and miss, but I'll link my favourite one below. Paint the top edge with water and attach your pearls. Do the same around the top of the 4 inch. To clean them up, use a little water on a brush to melt the icing sugar. Time for roses. For a full tutorial on how to make these quick, fuss-free versions, just check the description box or the iCard. To secure it into place, insert a cocktail stick into the rose and then down into the tear. For the one on the board, add a blob of black paste and dampen it with water. Push the rose into the ball of paste to angle it and stick it just how you want it. Here I've added a large black leaf to disguise the back of the rose. Gently slip your branch between the rose and the large leaf and bend it into shape. Add another spray down behind the rose on the board. Then for the last one, you can have it pointing down by sliding it under the rose. This awesome topper was sent to me by the bride and groom, which is what I matched the red colour to. It is, however, quite heavy and has this velvety velour type coating on the bottom. We don't want to add royal icing or ganache to stick this down and then have furry black hairs stuck to the top of the cake. So we're going to add supports underneath to take the weight. Just marking dots with the Dresden tool where they need to go. One under the groom and one under the bride. Insert straws all the way down and snip them level. 
Now the topper will sit on top without squashing the cake underneath. It will be left off for travelling and placed on at the venue when the cake is in place. And we're done. A black, white and red elegant gothic design, perfect for that alternative wedding. Don't forget to enter the competition for a chance to win the cake lace mat. The winner will be announced on Instagram stories on the 18th of September. Hope you enjoyed this wedding cake tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next week. Bye guys.